I want to start by praying um, before we get into our scripture. So if everyone would bow their heads. Yes, sure. Father God, right now, as we come to your throne of grace, oh God, Father, we just ask and request your presence, oh God. And Father, we just ask that you breathe on this message, oh God, and remind mm -hmm. us that we are yours and you are ours, mm -hmm. God. And yes, you said Lord. if we're in you and you're in us, we can ask what we will. Right now, Lord God, we just ask that you Build us up, O oh God, where the enemy is trying to tear us down. Give us your fresh anointing. Amen. Give us your presence, O oh God, Amen. and let it rest heavy as the dew rests upon the grass. Amen. And Father, we'll be mindful to give you the praise. We will be mindful to give you the honor. We will be mindful to give you yes, the glory. Lord, it's you. in yeah. Jesus' name that we pray. Yes. Yes. And let the house amen. say amen. 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 Well, good morning, students. Good morning. Good morning, Webb. Uh, this morning, we're going to talk and come from uh, the book of Romans, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. And we're going to speak on our life under construction. All right. Mm -hmm. Can we say that together? Uh, our, our life, life under, under construction. construction. Our scripture says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices holy and pleasing to God this is your spiritual act of worship mm. do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind mm. yes. then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is his good pleasing and perfect will mm. so in preparing for this message I look to the book of Romans which is our guide to spiritual living, spiritual Christian living, and for us to pursue God at all costs. The word construction means to pile up, to build up, to form, mm. or to devise by putting together systematically. The author of this great letter is the Apostle Paul. You remember him. Mm -hmm. His name was Saul. Mm. He was on his way to Damascus on assignment from the Roman government. He was headed there to force out those who call themselves Christians, to force out those who call themselves people of the way, to force them out by killing them, by persecuting them when he met and mm. encountered a great light. All right. That great light was Jesus. And that great light blinded him on his way and knocked him off his beast. And this would be the beginnings of the butterfly that we call the Apostle Paul. Hallelujah. Wow. So our scripture starts out and it says, I beseech you. That means I beg you. In view of God's mercy. That means when people are looking at our life, he is saying, I'm urging you to be who God has called you to be at all costs. Amen. He says to present your bodies a living sacrifice. Now, sacrifice to us don't really mean anything. Mm, that's right. Because in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. you had to bring your sacrifice to the priest. And that priest would take it on your behalf to God. Mm -hmm. Because you couldn't stand in the presence of God, only mm. the high priest. Mm. All right. And so we're talking about a life of submission and surrender. And these will be the tools that we need to construct our new building, our new life, our new bodies, which are in Christ. Mm. So this means that we are not to regard our bodies just as normal bodies. They are sacred. Amen. They are a stewardship with which God has entrusted to us. Our bodies, so to speak, are God's capital. And he has placed that capital in our hands for his investment. So God expects us to make the most of our bodies. He expects us to protect them. Mm. He expects us to preserve them. Mm. He expects us to develop and to use them for his service. Yes, Lord. He expects our bodies to produce returns on his investment. Mm. All right. For the benefit of our fellow man, for the benefit of our God, and for the benefit of ourselves. Mm. So our bodies are not our own. Our bodies are bought with a price. Mm, so we're not to just pamper our bodies. We're not to just indulge in all those things that we want to indulge in. We're not to mistreat our bodies. Our bodies are a living sacrifice to God. Amen. 
And so as we see the picture of sacrifices in the Old Testament, we have to remind ourselves that they became ritualistic, that they no longer had the value that God had intended for them to have. And so now Christ is saying for us to be a living sacrifice, that means we need to have a fresh life, a life that's active, a life that's fresh for him. In most cases, when people say being a living sacrifice, it means everything except for giving of ourselves. Sure, you can write a check, mm -hmm. but when you come to talking about giving time, as we said earlier this morning, that becomes a part of your life. Mm. And so all that Christ has done for us, do we mean to say that we're going to say no to him? He died on the cross so that we can come in and be all that God wants us to be. Now, that's a lavish gift, and we should yield our mind, our bodies, as well as our soul to him. I'm talking about a life of sacrifice. Mm. I'm talking about our life under construction. Now, you remember in Deuteronomy 6 and 4, he says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mm. with all your soul, yes. and with all your strength. Yes. This is the essence of our life. This is the essence of our mission. Our lives are to be on fire for him. The Lord says he is a consuming fire, mm -hmm. and he will accept no right. less than our bodies and our lives being on fire mm -hmm. for Amen. him. Amen. We are not to withhold anything from him. When we withhold from him, we are saying, in essence, he is not a part of us. But the Lord is saying, I will anoint you, and I will send you, and your life will be effective. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 22, Ezekiel says of the Lord, I will give you a new heart. I will put a new spirit in you. I will remove from your heart that stone and give you a heart of flesh. This is our life under construction. Mm. And I like it a little better in 2 Corinthians. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Mm. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. Yes. We're talking about getting rid of the old man and making the new man available. Amen. We're talking about a life that's being transformed. We're talking about a life that's under construction. Now, when we look at transformation, this is an invis invisible process. But it's a progressive process. It's one where we begin to look like Christ. Ephesians 5 and 1 says, Be imitators <coughs> of God. Therefore, as dearly loved children, we should live a life of love. Just as Christ loved us. Mm. And gave himself up as a fragrant offering unto God. This can only take place when we look to God, who is able to show us who we are in him. And know that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. We're talking about a life under construction. Mm. To have a life that is transformed is not going to come quick. Mm. And it's not going to be easy. All right. There are things that vie for our attention all day long. So you may ask yourself, why do I need to change? It's nothing wrong with me. I'm okay. Mm. I'm a good person. When I die, I'll probably go to mm. heaven. Those are not biblical things. The Lord says in Romans 10 and 9 that if you confess with your mouth and you believe it in your heart, mm -hmm. then you are saved. We're talking about that type of life. We're talking about when Proverbs 14 and 12 says, when we think we are right in our own, in our own eyes, the Lord says that we will lead, that will lead to death. There is always room in our lives for improvement, right. better ways yeah. to serve, mm. better ways to witness. And when we share what we have with others, that is truly what God wants us to do. But in this society, we are more interested in keeping up with the Joneses. Mm. When we compare ourselves among ourselves, the Bible says that's not wise. Mm. That's in 2 Corinthians 10 and 12. Our standard is Jesus. Amen. This is our point of reference. Mm. Because when we do it any other way, we set ourselves up for failure. When we look around the world today, we see it in its fallen state. We see fallen people and we see fallen times. 
And when we look at things, it used to be we could see a clear cut path of right and wrong, but that's no longer the case today. Right now, right is wrong and wrong mm. is right. Mm. Lord have mercy. It is our responsibility to show a dying world what Christ really looks mm. like. Amen. And how do we do that? We do that in our everyday life. Verse 2 of tw uh, Romans chapter 12 says, do not conform any longer. Now, any mm. implies that we are still conforming. Mm. It says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Miss Joanne just talked about salvation through the, the, the helmet of salvation, protecting your mind. Mm -hmm. And we have to protect our mind. Mm. The Bible says when we conform, that means that we look just like the world. Mm. But we must reject what the world says and listen to what God says. And conforming means to simply be in agreement with, mm. to adapt to, to look like everybody else is looking. Now, if we listen to his voice, we would be misled. You know what voice that means. Mm from the magazines to the television to the billboards. All the right. voice says mm. something like this. I don't like the way I look. Mm. I don't like my shape. Mm. I don't like my skin tone. Mm. I'm too tall. <laughs> I'm too short. Mm. I'm too thick. I'm too thin. Mm. They're too young <clears throat> and they're certainly too old. Mm. Nothing now is off limits. That's the voice of the world. But as we begin to look at transformation, I thought, I could use an illustration. And what better illustration to use than the butterfly? Mm, amen. In this day and time, there is not much time for watching butterflies or to even find out where they come from. <laughs> amen. For the next few minutes, let's just look at the life of the butterfly. The butterfly is a cold-blooded creature, which means they don't generate or create their own body temperature. Mm. So their metabolism has to be from the outside environment, which would be the sun. They need the heat to warm their bodies so that they can fly. Mm. As a result, their body temperature changes with the temperature of the surroundings. Mm. Is that true of us? Mm. Do we change at the temperature of our surroundings? Mm. Therefore, butterflies rely on heat absorbed from the sun. And butterflies are in their adult stage. Mm. Mm -hmm. And so this name, Lepopetria, means scaly wings. Hmm. Their bodies are covered with thousands of scales overlapping in rows. The scales are arranged in colorful designs, unique with each species, and they <coughs> give the butterfly its beauty. Now the butterfly's perfect temperature is about 82 to 100 degrees. Oh that they're able to fly around in. So mm. you're not going to see them on a cloudy day. Mm. You're not going to probably see them on a cold day. Mm. Butterflies best with their wings spread out. You may see them on rocks. You may see them on different things. So we're going to back up just a minute and we're going to talk about the ground dweller, which was the caterpillar. The caterpillar, <coughs> and the Greek word for it, is metamorpho. That means to change, to transform, to transfigure. Mm -hmm. This is where we get our English word metamorphosis. Right. Now there's two type of metamorphosis. The first one is a simple metamorphosis. That means just a gradual change. You don't really see anything happening, but before you know it, it's in this adult stage. Sometimes that's how our life looks. Mm -hmm. It's just not really much is happening, not really much is changing, but we're in our adult stage of mm. our Christian life. But there is another part of metamorphosis. It's called a complete metamorphosis. Amen. And this means the butterfly, or the caterpillar, so I should say, goes through a complete and marked change. Mm. Metamorpho emphasizes a total change from the inside outward. All right. That's what we're talking about this morning. Transformation of your mind. Transformation of how we think. The word meta implies change. Morph meanings form. Change form. So if we have not changed who we used to be, 
we are only doing a simple metamorphosis. <coughs> I would just like to tell you a quick little story. And it's about a little boy who saw a caterpillar. Hmm. And he runs to his mother and asks his mother if he could have this caterpillar. And she says, yes, you can, son, only if you'll take good care of it. And so he agrees, and his mother gives him a jar, and, and he puts sticks in the jar, and he puts food in the jar, and he puts the caterpillar in the jar, and he's hoping one day that this caterpillar will go from this small caterpillar to a beautiful butterfly. So each day the boy would run home looking and hoping to see this butterfly in the jar. And so one day this hole opens up and he begins to see the caterpillar making a change. Mm. And so the butterfly wasn't coming out quick enough and he decides, well, I'm going to assist the butterfly. So he runs and gets a pair of scissors mm. to cut the cocoon open. Isn't that like us? Mm -hmm. When things are not moving fast enough, we mm. want to aid God into moving our life along a little mm. further. So he runs and gets the scissors, but he's a smart little boy. He walks back with the scissors because he's been mm. taught not to All run right. with scissors in his hands. Ah. So he runs to the jar and he cuts open the cocoon, hoping that butterfly is just going to sprout out with his beautiful wings. Mm. Little did he know that the butterfly comes out with very small wings and a very big body. Hmm. And so he was perplexed and he said, the wings are gonna dry out and his body is gonna shrink and he's gonna turn into that beautiful butterfly. Never happens, never happens. And so his mom takes him to talk to, <clears throat> excuse me, a butterfly expert and, and she tells them what has happened and what her son did and come to find out that the aid of the little boy stepped in and destroy the process that God has set in place. Hmm. All right. God has set in place for all of us, as well as the caterpillar, to go through a process. But what happened is a little boy stepped in and circumvented that process. Hmm. And by him circumventing the process, that meant that the butterfly couldn't be all that God intended him to be. Hmm. He would always walk around with a big body and shriveled wings. Hmm. So, what the boy didn't understand is we're supposed to go through a struggle. That butterfly is supposed to go through a struggle. And so, with his good intentions, he hurt the butterfly. So I said all of that to say this. As you take your butterfly and put it on your desk or put it in your window, remind yourselves that people cannot be what they cannot see. Mm, if right. they cannot see a butterfly in you, they cannot be a butterfly eagle either. Mm. And as we continue to study here at Atlanta Bible College, let us remind ourselves in our everyday struggle, the mind in our everyday struggle, to remind ourselves of the struggle of the butterfly. Because it is in our everyday lives that we remind ourselves that God is able to do for us what he does for the butterfly. And as I take my seats, I leave you with these words. And they're from a great man. And it says, <clears throat> if there is no struggle, there is no progress. All right. And that is Frederick Douglass. Amen. So yeah. this morning, just remind yourselves, if you're going through, if you're having a hard time, renew your mind. Mm. Remind yourselves that our lives are under construction. Remind ourselves that God will never leave us, nor will he forsake us, John 14 and 6. So just keep your mind stayed on him. And remember that our lives are always under construction.